Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah and in this video I'm going to go over how Poms C and our light environment can affect things such as blood sugar, cortisol levels, appetite, energy levels and arousal. And I'm going to go into the whole story of POMC, but make it understandable for people who are all brand new to it. So there will be some physics in it, but hopefully explained in a more simple way. And at the end, I'll go over why melanin is so important, not just for a tan, but as part of our energy system as well, and what it provides in the presence of UV light. So when it comes to receiving information from the outside, a human would, or an animal or whatever, it would be classed as an open system because we're exposed to our environment and in say a laboratory or in physics when thermodynamic experiments are done that's a closed system so nothing can get in or out and you just measure something that's not influenced by the environment so in physics labs uh, when we talk about optics this would be the an example of linear optics however non-linear optics which is what happens in biological organisms is because of the fact that we can take in maybe one or two photons of light and then we can amplify that amplify that signal up to a, a million or more bits of information throughout the body so this allows us to get information from the sun and from our temperature uh, inside the body so it can travel from the surfaces which i'll go into in a moment deep into the body so places like the mitochondria into the brain and such like so basically, we are a photo multiplying system that a small amount of photons can come in and this can then be translated into a large signal that can be received by lots of other components of the body. And with our surfaces that receive this information, the eyes and the skin are the main two. However, the gut and the lungs are very important as well. So information or small bits of information can land here and then get propagated through the body. And then we have things like opsins, such as rhodopsin in the retina and melanopsin, uh, which receives blue light. And there are other opsins as well. I won't go into that today. We've also got molecules like cholesterol and melanin that are non-visual photoreceptors, so they can process light. And what I'm going to talk about today, pro-opio melanocortin or POMC, this is in our surfaces but also POMC is on our insides as well. So there's lots and lots of POMC in the eyes, uh, on the front of the, the belly skin, um, our backs and our calves, but also we've got POMC inside. So in the hypothalamus where the hormone leptin docks, there's a lot of POMC. It's also in the immune system and other places as well. So what can POMC produce for us? So basically POMC is like a, pep a big peptide and it can get chopped up into different pieces uh, to make different molecules for us. And this chopping up happens in, the, in our anterior pituitary gland. So this is where our own personal biological pharmacy is. So first of all, it can get cut into something called alpha MSH or melanocyte stimulating hormone. So this is involved in making melanin um, appetite, appetite reduction, uh, arousal, and it has other roles as well. Then beta MSH is more to do with regulating appetite as in lowering it. Uh, gamma MSH is, is different. That uh, works with the blood pressure system. So I'm not going to go into that today. Then we've got ACTH and this is produced from POMC and it's really important for cortisol production. Now we die without cortisol, so we need the right amount of cortisol at the right time. And it's only a problem when it's being produced or stimulated all the time, or, or is it a, a level that's too high or too low? And there's another protein as well that's important for regulating insulin. So this is called CLIP or corticotropin-like intermediate peptide. And this is an insulin secretagogue, so that means it raises uh, levels of insulin. And insulin is just like cortisol, people tend to demonize it, but the insulin is, we die without it. So it plays vital roles, not just for lowering blood sugar, but also in the brain and in other tissues. Then we've got um, lipotropins, and these are involved in fat metabolism. So as I said at the beginning, POMC is highly tied into metabolism, and it's also tied into the leptin melanocortin pathway that is extremely important for our appetite and metabolism and regulating the amount of energy in our body. 
Also, from POMC, cutting it up, you can make uh, endorphins and enkephalins. So this happens in UV light, and these endorphins and enkephalins have pain-killing activities that they make us feel good. So we are primed to get addicted to the sun. So if somebody gives up all their other addictions and just gets addicted to the sun, because um, I do sometimes find with people, they give up one addiction only to start another. But then if you got addicted to the sun, that's the natural addiction you're meant to have. So how does um, POMC work and do this? So what happens is, depending on what colour light is in your environment, POMC gets cut up in different ways. For example, in the morning at sunrise, there's a lot of red light, violet light, and a particular balance of blue light. So this particular combination causes POMC to be cut up in a certain way, so it makes certain products for you. And then as the sun moves around, the light that we receive changes. So then we get the UVA and the UVB rise. That causes POMC to be cleaved in, in a different way. That's what we would make the enkephalins. So basically, POMC is a sensor that whatever time of day it is, based on light from the sun, it can be chopped up to make the appropriate peptides for us at the appropriate time. So just a quick... So just... So when, when POMC is cleaved in sunlight, it basically makes us feel less hungry because we're making more alpha MSH. We have less pain, I mean, in a better mood and a bit more horny. So people do know that when they go out in the sun, they feel better. We, we just know that from our own experience. When we're indoors under just artificial blue light without the UVA, the UVB, the red, or this would be like light from our screens, from lights in the ceiling, LEDs, things like that. The way POMC is chopped up is, is different because it's not a natural signal. So what happens here is there's more chopping up of POMC into, into the ACTH. So number one, that means you're going to produce more cortisol. And like I said before, that's not a bad thing if it's at the right time, but if you're producing cortisol all day long and in the evening because you're under blue light, that's not good at all. And cortisol also raises blood sugar. As I said before, the other product of POMC clip, that also raises insulin and we need insulin, but it's also a growth and storage hormone. So we've basically put our blood sugar up using blue light via the POMC cleavage. And now we've also put insulin up as well. So effectively, you can make your blood sugar go up and then start to store that without actually eating any food at all. So it's like not even having the treat and you've still affected your blood sugar and for some people potentially affected uh, their weight as well. So at the end of the day, the more you can eat your food outside under the correct light, the better your blood sugar regulation and response will be. And also people who live in a very blue light environment due to their work or they can't help it, or they didn't know, or they don't want to block blue light, then you shouldn't be eating a high carb diet or you should really limit carbs because you're already affecting the system with the blue light. So again, I don't tell people what they should do. It's their choice. You should do your research, work on what's going to work for you and what particular problems you're experiencing. I'm just giving you the mechanism of how blue light raises blood sugar and it raises insulin. So the main final target of the leptin melanocortin pathway, which has POMC involved in as well, is melanin. So let's look at the melanin. And there are different types of melanin, but also melanin is really interesting because it's a dark pigment that basically traps all other light frequencies as well as other electromagnetic frequencies. And melanin is pretty ubiquitous in biology. It's in fish, birds, plants, fungi, bacteria, and other organisms. And there are three different main types of melanin. So there's the eumelanin, which is the dark pigment in skin, hair, and eyes. Then we've got pheomelanin, that's the pink and red pigment in lips and in the hair, and it's other places too. And then finally, we've got the neuromelanin. So this is the one that's deep inside the body. So it's in the brain, in the nervous system, in other locations. So these, these melanin vary a bit amongst themselves because they're doped with, it, with different elements but they are the same group of compound.
in the presence of UVA light, melanin can split water into molecular oxygen, electrons, and molecular hydrogen. Now, oxygen is the final acceptor of electrons in the electron transport chain. So it's sort of part of how the exhaust of the mitochondria happens. So if there's not an oxygen to receive the electrons, they can't flow. And with hydrogen or molecular hydrogen, it's a very powerful antioxidant. But most importantly, it can deal with the harmful or dangerous hydroxyl radical that we don't really have many other defenses against because some of the other nitrogen and oxygen reactive species, they have roles in the body. So molecular hydrogen is really important as an antioxidant for the hydroxyl or the OH um, free radicals. And then finally, that the electrons can be used in our um, coherent water matrix as our, as our battery they may or may not go down into the electron transport chain. But just to keep things simple, the more electrons you've got, the better your battery's charged. So you can get electrons, again, from grounding from the sun, but the, you can also get electrons from melanin as well. So it's like a, an additional energy source for us. With this system, just to finish it off to talk about appetite regulation and metabolism, because a lot of people are interested in that side of the leptin melanocortin pathway, so leptin is basically a hormone that reports on how much energy you have in the body. Leptin also regulates the immune system, bone metabolism, fertility. So it does a lot of things as well. And at night, assuming your leptin system's working properly, it docks into the hypothalamus and there's a lot of POM C in the hypothalamus. And this docking happens in the dark around about uh, 12 or 1 a.m., assuming you didn't disturb your leptin earlier. And then this basically reports uh, to your brain how much energy you've got on board. So it knows how to burn your body fat, save it, store it, or how much or how little appetite you need to have for the next day. And if, if we remember from POMC, which again is tied into all this system, POMC produces peptides that, are, that can control fat metabolism, they can control blood sugar levels, and they can control insulin. So this whole system of melanin, POMC, and leptin, you, you can see now how they have a role in our appetite, in how we process sugar and fats, what we do with them, do we store them, or do we use them? Because leptin is very high up on the hormone hierarchy, it does have control over things like thyroid hormones um, and insulin as well, because people become leptin resistant before they become insulin resistant. But then, as you can see from what I've explained today, people can also run into insulin resistance from too much blue light uh, as well. So it's not always about the food, because there's a lot more to how biology works than just the food electrons and the, the nitrogen and the carbon we get from foods. Some people think it's just sort of um, a structural agent for our physical bodies. And we've got sort of other bodies inside us again, ethereal bodies and such like. So again, sometimes it's not a food problem. It's a whole problem with your whole circadian rhythm and your light environment. And for some people who are doing everything right with their ways of eating and still struggling or somebody that's trying their hardest to manage their insulin resistance, it's, it's very advisable to look at your light environment. Because if you've got a bad body clock or a bad circadian rhythm, everything in your biochemistry is going to be all out of sync and it just can't function like a smooth uh, machine. So I hope you found this useful and thank you very much for watching. Feel free to comment and I'll hopefully see you again on the channel.